In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a uh, curtain wall as well as curtain doors. Um, the curtain wall is a bit tricky um, in comparison with uh, regular walls. Um, however, uh, if you um, understand the workflow, you should be okay. Um, first thing we need to do is actually examine the curtain wall details. Um, if you go to the join A2.0, and you will see at the front of the um, par partial center, obviously there are um, quite a few sections of uh, storefront systems. Okay, so those curtain wall detail um, give you the dimensions of the length of the curtain wall, but um, the individual panels does not have any uh, do not have any dimensions available. So this is one of the uh, challenges there. And also, if you notice, um, there are several curtain doors um, in between the different curtain panels, and trying to lay out the um, pattern of those curtain well, sections is also uh, one of the challenges we have to um, face. Um, to examine the curtain wall detail, we can find a curtain wall detail on section view. Uh, for instance, the A3.0B1 section view. So as you see here, this is the section view for the curtain wall storefront curtain wall system. And as you see from this detail view, you can find it. You can find the um, curtain wall heights as well as the uh, uh, curtain grid layouts uh, here says this little dimension here says the storefront system stops at 9 foot 8 inches and uh, you do have a kicker of the temper uh, have this height which will be the um, um, curtain mullen uh, heights which is at 2 foot and 1 inch above ground so those dimensions need to be carried over when you actually start to do the modeling but most importantly uh, there was one thing I need to point out is uh, where is this curtain wall located in terms of its um, relationship with the grid line here, which is grid line A? As you see here, we do not have any dimensions available here on this particular uh, detail view. This view is actually available in a section view um, for the um, um, structure joins. Let's, if we we'll go to S4.0 join right here, and you should be able to find this detail view, which is S4.01. And here it says, remember when we actually were trying to place the slab edge, you will see this 10 inch um, distance here, and you see the curtain wall actually is located, the edge of the curtain wall, okay, is located he right here, which is 10 inch plus the half inch expansion joints, which is 10 and a half um, inch. However, this curtain wall, the thickness you see here include the uh, aluminum uh, moulins, which is two and a half inch. So when we're actually trying to place the curtain wall, the distance between this little area, okay, the distance between here and the grid line is actually 10 inch plus half inch minus half the um, curtain mullion. The mullion is two and a half inch, so half of that is actually one and a quarter inch. So you are using 10 inch plus half inch subtract one and a quarter inch, which you get is actually nine and a quarter inch. So that's why when you actually try and place the curtain wall, which is the big class here, supposed to be um, nine and a quarter inch. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, and it's not indicated anywhere, but uh, it's great to actually to understand that. Okay, so it's nine and a quarter inch. So this distance is calculated, it's not you know, given directly by the um, join whatsoever. Okay, so this is information that you will need to interpret. And if you are in the field, you actually have to discuss this with the um, the con the trades who is actually installing the curtain wall system. So let's get back to our um, Revit model. Okay, so to place the curtain wall, we need to go to our floor plan. Uh, let's go to the level zero one finished floor. Okay, so now. To place this curtain wall requires a lot of patience. Okay, as you see in the joint itself, uh, obviously, yeah, there's a lot of things you need to take care of, especially the dimensions and the measurements for each individual sections of the curtain wall. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place those curtain walls section by section. So this moment, I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate the curtain wall sections uh, sections between grid line one and three. So the job for us to uh, do is this really this one two, three, four piece of sections here. To get started, we need to understand where does the curtain wall start and where does it end, 
Okay, so the dimension between those current wall here uh, will need to be calculated. So let's go to a different join. Uh, let's say it's uh, it's floor plan. Let's go to A1.1, and on this floor plan, it's pretty clear that between grid line one three, you have this big section of curtain wall, and their dimensions here. It tells you it starts right here and it ends right here. Okay, so distance you are trying to measure is actually what what is the dimension here of the starting point of the curtain wall, of the curtain wall in relationship to grid line one. So it's very easy to miss. Uh, to make a mistake here, because here it says five foot, and uh, you will assume it starts at five foot on the right side of uh, grid line one, which is not um, exactly correct, because this five foot uh, starts from this little area here, which is on the left side of the grid line one. So it's actually five feet minus uh, six inches. So here, this curtain wall starts actually on. At the point of four point uh, four foot six inches away from grid line one, so uh, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so this is five foot, but that five foot including this little section which is six inches. So the real starting point for grid wall here is at four foot six inches from grid line one. Okay, and uh, for uh, for the ending point of the uh, curtain wall, you'll have a five foot here, but that five foot is including the total width of the. This Little thing which is called pilaster. So half of it is actually two foot six inches. So the curtain will actually end, okay, two foot six inches before it gets to grid line three. Okay, so those are the things we need to take care of. Again, like I said, where in, in terms of the curtain wall is going to be placed in relation to grid line A is going to be nine for, uh, nine inch and a quarter inch nine and a quarter inch away from grid line A because of the calculation we showed you um, previously. So this is what we're trying to do. Okay, before we even get started by joining the um, curtain wall, we actually need to set up some reference lines. Okay, so one of the tools we can use to set up reference lines is called model line. So it's located under okay the architecture tab and uh, on the model panel. The middle command here is called model line. So what how I'm going to place this model line is I'm going to use something as a reference line because we're trying to establish a relationship between this model line and grid line A. So uh, naturally I'm going to use grid line A as um, as a reference line. So the way I place the line is going to be using um, the pick line tool. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to specify the distance to be zero nine zero and a quarter. So that way I tell the program I'm actually going to set up an uh, offsets of nine and a quarter inch. So move your mouse to grid line A. Make sure that your mouse is slightly uh, below grid line A because you wanted to place the model line uh, underneath uh, grid line A. So click on that, and uh, you can actually annotate this uh, line in relation to grid line A by going to the annotate uh, tab and go to line, and uh, you dimension the distance between this model line you just created with. Grid line A is actually nine and a quarter inch. Okay, so that's uh, where the curtain wall um, glazing, the glass, is going to be located. And uh, same time, like I mentioned, the curtain wall is going to start. Okay, it's going to start at four foot six inches away from grid line one, and it stops at you know two foot six inches before it gets to grid line three. So we need to set up the starting point and the ending point as well. So we use model line again. Okay, in this case we can use a model line again. Okay, and what we do is actually go ahead and draw a line vertically to intersect with the previous model line I created. Okay, same here on this end. Okay, so. The goal is actually trying to use little, this little intersection line here as our ending point, and use the other intersection point as our starting point. So to uh, accurately locate this model line, what we have to do is actually make sure that our dimension is correct. So um, to dimension between this model line and the grid line one, we can actually drag this little boot dots and to the grid line one. At this moment, is actually full. For uh, four feet eight inch something, so I want to change that to four feet six inches, so that way it will be located in the right location. Okay, and same on this side. Okay, this model line is supposed to be two foot and six inches away from grid line three. At this moment, is different, so we we want to change that to two 
spacebar uh, 6 and hit enter. So that way I have been accurately located this starting and ending point for grid line uh, for the curtain wall. Now it's time for us to use the curtain wall uh, system. So let's go to the wall command and uh, we're going all the way using the tab selector. This is called tab selector all the way down to this area which is called curtain wall. Uh, in this case we're not going to use ex uh, exterior glazing and a still front which already had pre-defined moulins on it because our curtain wall have different sizes in terms of their sections. The distance between different moulins are different. Okay, So it's not uh, easy to uh, define that distance uh, with one universal value. So we're going to use the curtain wall here. This curtain wall allows you only to place the uh, glass. Then you have to place actually the moulins by yourself. So we're going to choose this curtain wall here. And remember that the curtain wall starts at 0, 0 and uh, ends at 9 foot 8 inches. So I don't need any base offsets because it starts at ground which is a 0, 0. The how constraints is gonna be interesting. You have two different two different options. If you want to specify the top constraints to the next level, which will be 14 foot 8 inches above it, that's fine. But don't forget to set a, a minus 5 foot offsets from the top because your current wall only goes to 9 foot 8 inches, right? But you can also use the same level, um, which is a zero zero, as our uh, top constraints. But in this case, your wall at this moment the height is a zero because it starts at a zero and finish at a zero, which doesn't make any sense, right? But you can actually set up a top offset value to be nine foot eight inches. That will allow you to create a curtain wall that is nine foot eight inches tall. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so that will be the heights of the current wall. Now we start to draw the current wall. To draw the current wall is relatively easy. Um, you just select this little intersection, intersection right here. Okay, you see the intersection turns on. And uh, go all the way here until you okay, click the other intersection point, which is here. Okay, so you rub it. When you actually create the current wall, the glass is automatically offsets a little bit from um, the um, where your mouse goes, but that that is okay. Uh, that's totally fine. Okay, so now you have this um, piece of glass created. If you go to 3D view a little quick, and you'll find, okay, this is the curtain wall you just created. Okay, so um, it only has a gigantic piece of glass, which is not really exactly uh, the curtain wall yet. We still have to place the moulins. Okay, so in order to place the moulins. You have to define the curtain grids. The curtain grids is going to be this command under architecture tab and build on curtain grid uh, command. Curtain grid, curtain grids are literally uh, virtual lines. It does not exist in reality, but curtain grids are the place mark for you um, to place the curtain moon. So the moons will be uh, placed exactly where the curtain grids are. So our job next step is actually trying to lay out the curtain grids so we can actually place the moons. Okay. In that case, let's take a look at our um, south elevation view. Okay, let's go to south elevation view, and you will see this gigantic piece of glass. Sometimes people don't like this, you know, bluish color. You can turn that off by going choose a different view style to hit the line. Okay, so that will actually get rid of that uh, influence of the um, uh, color. Now. This is the most challenging, uh, challenging part, as a matter of fact. Let's go to our um, A2.0 again. So, you know, to lay out those curtain, okay, curtain grids to um, create the uh, roadmap for those curtain moulins, okay, it's very important for us to accurately place those curtain grids. However, the dimensions we actually have so far is basically those dimensions here, okay. So, fortunately, as you see, okay, Grid line two is right, located right here. Okay, so this is the center of this little, mini, little tiny panel here. Those little tiny panels, they are eight inches. Um, reason being, I know that is because those panels actually are for the um, interior wall partitions. If you go to a one point one again, and you'll find out. Okay, so those is a part, this is a partition wall, and you see that there is eight inches. So this little panel here basically is trying to block the view of the uh, you know customers because they they don't want the customers to see through uh, into their partition wall. So that's why you have eight inch right here. Okay, and the grid line two. This is exactly where grid line two is at. It's right in the middle of this eight inch little section of curtain panels. Okay, so 
let's go back to our a to um, zero and uh, let's utilize those dimensions and trying to lay out this uh, curtain grid system right here. Okay, so if we have grid line two here, so if I want to place a curtain grid on this side and that side, both of those two uh, curtain grids are supposed to be four inches away from the grid line um, two because together the distance between those two grid cutting grids is actually uh, eight inches. So hope that makes sense to you. So in that case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on okay the bubble head for those grid lines so I don't have to zoom out to see which uh, grid line exactly it is. So that's why I'm trying to use this tool which is called current grid right here. Okay. So I'm going to actually going to place this current grid. Remember if you want to place vertical current grid you must as supposed to go along with the horizontal side of the glass. Okay. So this is what it is. So just throw it here. Okay. And the, the exact distance we do not care yet. But you, what you have to do is after that is you have to adjust the distance between those curtain grids. Okay, so in this case, I want to measure between this curtain grid and the grid line two. So you can drag that blue down. So you left click and drag it towards the um, grid line two. You see the value now. The distance is actually seven inches, which is not good. So we have to change that to four inches. Okay, uh, same on this side. Okay, um, you can drag that to this line and change that to four inches. Okay, with this for this grid line uh, curtain grid being placed, next thing you do is actually go ahead and check. Okay, what is this curtain grid is going to be located? Okay, you have a dimension 19 um, uh, feet 6 inches. So literally, the center of this little panel can be defined, right? So what we're going to do is actually go ahead and create another uh, curtain grid right here. Okay, and it doesn't really matter where it is, and it applies two on both sides. Okay. All right. What's going to happen is this one, the distance is supposed to be 19 foot 6 inches. Okay. So this is the one. And I can drag this one over a little bit. Okay. So this one, the distance is 19 foot 6 inches. Where do you get it? You get it from here, right? It's 19 foot uh, 6 inches. So then, in this model here, you have a two curtain grids on both sides. Uh, this one is supposed to be four inches away from the center of the little panel. This one same thing is supposed to be four inches. Now with those two curtain grids created, the middle one is actually uh, needs to be removed because it don't really have a curtain grid there. Okay. The only reason you place this curtain grid here is trying to locate the center of the panel. Now with those, okay, with this two curtain grids in place, what you have to do next is actually trying to figure out how are we actually going to separate okay those one two three four five sections here right so you do not you do not have any dimensions regarding how wide okay those panels going to be but the only thing you can confirm is two things okay actually two things you can confirm first the door is definitely located in the middle right second okay um those panels those two panels have equal sizes those two panels have also equal sizes. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to place, okay, first we're going to define where the door is going to be located. Okay, this is going to be in the, right in the middle. Okay, so we're going to place a curtain grid here and then we'll figure out the distance between um, this curtain grid with the center of the door. Door, a thick, uh, the width of the door is always three foot four across the whole uh, curtain wall system. How do you know that? If you go to your join a five zero and you'll find out there's a door schedule right here okay remember what is a schedule okay it's a tabular format summarize a lot of different things that's uh, are that are in common right so you see those still front doors they're all three foot seven foot tall okay three foot wide and seven foot tall okay so that's your curtain door dimensions okay so let's get back to this so with that being said let's go back to this little panel here and let's Go ahead and throw a curtain grid here, right in the middle. As you see, it snaps into the middle directly. Okay, so if the door is three foot, um, then on each side is supposed to be one foot and six inches away from it. Okay, so what you can use this to define the age of the door. Okay, now the two panels are supposed to have equal sizes. That's exactly what's going on here. Okay, so in that case, you delete the middle curtain grid which you don't really have one because that's supposed to be a door okay same time same time 
you have already figured out, okay, this is a door, those two panels are equal size, and the two panels are equal size. That's exactly what we did here. Okay, makes sense. On the other side, same exact situation, right? So you have the door, then equal size panels, equal size panels. So this is what I do. Okay. So couldn't grid again, right in the middle. Okay. And one foot of six inches on one side, one foot and six inches on the other side. Okay. Then equal size. Then equal size on this side as well. Right? Okay. Then delete this middle section right here. Now on the other side, same thing. Okay. So first thing you have to do is actually locate this little uh, panel here. This little panel, okay, uh, is 15 foot away from grid line. Um, two, obviously, and uh, this little line here is actually right in the middle of this little little section here. So we're gonna place this of um, congruent here and place the two other congruents four inch on um, both sides. So this is what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna choose the congruent again and just place it right here and make sure that distance okay between this congruent here with the grid line um, two. So you need to drag that blue dials to quit line two to be 15 feet. Okay, so it's going to be 15 feet. Now, you still need two cutting grids on each side, both sides of this cutting grid. Okay, and um, the distance actually is supposed to be four inches, right? As we see um, there. So four inches, four inches is good. This one is actually going to be gone because you do not have really have a equipment grid there. It's just right in the middle of the panel. Now follow the same exact logic. Okay, the door is supposed to be located right in the middle of those two grid. Okay, and uh, they're going to be have a, a one foot six inch offsets to designate the left side of the door, and then one foot six inches on the right side of the door. Then those two panels are supposed to be equal sizes. Those two have supposed to be equal sizes. So that line in the middle of the door is supposed to be gone. Okay. So on the other hand, this one is different because you only have a door in the middle and you only have one panel and one panel on each side instead of those two panels on each side. Okay. So what we're going to do is actually the same methodology right in the middle. Okay. Right in the middle. As you see, the, the uh, system actually can recognize the middle section of the two congruence automatically. So here is one foot six inches, one foot and six inches. Okay. And um, you don't need any other lines because you only have one panel. Okay. In this case. So that will actually lay out all the vertical congruence here. Okay. Now, the difficult part here is how do you lay out Right, the horizontal one, which is two foot one inch away from ground, above ground, as you remember. And also, don't forget for the doors, you know, to um, modicate the door um, dimensions. The door is actually seven foot above ground. Okay, so this line here, those congruence has to be seven foot above ground. So to place horizontal congruence is actually the same methodology as you place the vertical congruence. So you choose congruence. Combined, and in this case, what we're trying to do here is this. Okay, um, we're trying to place the cutting grid at the bottom, but where we have a door, where we have those little section, you do not need okay this bottom cutting grid because it does not go through this door. It does not go through those little section there. So we have to okay get rid of the cutting grid in those positions for the bottom cutting grid. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a uh, command which is called place the cutting grids, but we have to exclude some the sections. So we use all except picked. So in this case, I'm gonna just place this thing. Okay, it doesn't really matter the dimension at this moment. I just place it horizontally. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna exclude the section we do not want, such as this one. We don't want that one. We don't want this little section here. We don't want this door here. And we don't want any section here for this little section. And we don't need anyone for the door here. Don't need anyone at the little section here. And don't need the door. Okay? So with that being done, click on modify. Okay? And you see it did it did exactly what I want it to. 
So the curtain grade has been placed, um, and all those doors, little sections, have been exclu uh, excluded from um, that curtain grade. So now you can click on the curtain grade and adjust this distance to be two foot one inch and above ground. Okay, so it's pretty simple, right? And it's pretty smart. So now the job is actually to place another curtain grate for the door. Okay, so you have one, two, three, three, four doors. So what I'm, gonna, I'm going to create a curtain grate again, but this time I'm going to create one segment at one time. So what I'm going to do is going to place this thing here. Okay, and before you do anything else, because you say you you might ask why you did not place the curtain grate here, right? Let's, let me explain that to you, okay? So once you place this little section here, the whole position, the whole horizontal position at the same height have already been has already been taken by this cutting grid. So you don't have to place another cutting grid for those doors individually anymore. Instead, you can add and remove segments. But before we do that, we would like to adjust its height to the correct heights. So supposed to be seven foot above ground, okay? So then what you can do is I want to add another section for the door here, for the door, for the door here, as well as the door here. So now to do that, we click on this curtain grid and choose add remove segments. So that you're gonna add one segment here for the door, add another segment for the door here, and another another segment here. So that way you will actually add the um curtain grid for those doors individually. So with that being done, we're now officially completing all the curtain grades for the whole section of the curtain wall. Okay, so if, let's go to 3D view, take a quick look. Okay, so the layout is now all done, as you see here, okay, exactly the way it's supposed to be for this little section right here. Now the job is trying to place the curtain um, moulins. So the moulins are actually going to be here. Well, obviously we need the moulins for every, uh, everywhere or anywhere we have actually uh, the curtain grids. So I'm going to choose all grid lines. In that case, if you move a mouse and uh, select the curtain wall you, um, you placed, and the curtain moulins are going to be placed, okay, automatically for all the edges and the curtain grids where you are specified, which is pretty neat. Okay. Now the last thing for the curtain wall is actually not only we have those curtain panels, but also you have those doors, right? So obviously, at this moment, okay, this is not a door, this is not a door, this is not a door, this is not a door either, okay? So you have to actually change the door here, okay? Change the panel into the door. Can you place a regular door into a curtain wall? The answer is no, you can't do it. You can only use curtain doors for curtain wall. So that's a rule of thumb, okay? For instance, if I go back to my floor um, plane, right here okay and I'm trying to place this door here right a regular door whatever door it's a three foot okay exactly the size but can you place it you cannot right let's go to 3d view a little quick okay so to place the curtain door here what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this panel first then we'll place it with a door so how do you select the panel it's pretty tricky you have to move your mouse hover above this panel and use a magic um, tab key, the TAB tab key. So tab key allow you to cycle through different components in the same place until this panel is highlighted. Okay, so then you'll click. Okay, I'll left click and select the panel. What you're going to do next is going to click on edit type. And I'm going to actually to load a door. So I'm going to load family, go to doors, and we're going to load the curtain door. Okay, you can only place curtain doors in curtain walls. So is a single door or a double door? It's actually a single door. So we're going to use the single glass door there. Okay, click on open. And then you'll notice, okay, um, once you load this door here, it actually become available right here. So it's going to be the single glass. Okay, so that is going to be the curtain wall single glass door. Click on OK, and now it turns into a door. Do the same exact thing for the rest of the doors. Okay, for the rest of the um, panels where you are supposed to place the door. So sometimes it takes a couple of clicks. Sometimes it only takes one. So it depends on where your mouse is at, obviously. So you can change that. Okay, so edit type and change that to the curtain wall single glass door, and repeat. Okay. And the last one is here. 
Okay, have to you actually have to highlight the panel in order to select the door uh, to select select the panel and then change that into a door. So that concludes our video for the code war. So you're gonna do the same thing, okay, for the rest of the building. They are um, very tedious. I agree with you, uh, but that's the only way you can actually place the current wall and place the current doors accurately. Okay, so follow the same workflow we just uh, I just demonstrated, and make sure you read those dimensions very carefully. Okay, so I will see you in the next video and talk about the exterior wall as well as the interior partition wall uh, modeling for the architectural part.